Hi guys and welcome to another Dragonair Silence God video. Guys, in today's video we're gonna take on Erzillus. This is a full guide on the uh, boss. It is one of the six uh, Lunar Halo Chief Challenge that we have to defeat weekly to be able to get those Lunar Halo um, token and be able to summon Ardred in two weeks and a half now. So we're going to need to try to get over at least 11, if not 22 millions of most of these bosses, depending on how many dices we pull on the event. And so it's very, very important to do good damage on each of them with consistency through the entire event. I've already done guides on two other bosses. One is Altered and the second one was Tower. Uh, they are on my channel. I'm going to pin them here up during the video. If you haven't seen them, you can jump on those. But I'm going to show you a quick recap of where I'm standing right now at the end after I've explained this fight. So you can see what champion I've been using there and what I'm thinking to tackle after this boss. Because this week we have four bosses to fight. And this is my third one above 22 million. Spoiler. Um, but let's jump into the consideration for this boss. As we said, it's going to take more damage from fire. Uh, fire has two school of damage dealer one is burn which has been added in season two and unfortunately here is not as good as we thought the best option is still wild wild is the school of damage that was already present in season one and we've been lucky enough in season one to be able to uh, get one of the legendary of the school of damage actually which is erich erich was at the end of the storyline so if you play season one or if you are playing season one and you're planning ahead for season two, I think you should try to obviously jump on that champion and get it. He is not one of the best champion absolutely in the game, but is a good damage dealer. And we're going to need to pair him with another wild champion and we're going to see all the consideration there. I'm going to suggest you for, for some uh, champion swap if I have some role that are important in the composition. We're going to have a look at the gear. And if a timing, there is a timing, there's not timing really, but we're going to see why it's better to not have any timing here. So let's jump into the camp and to the sparring pit because I've already saved the key, so I can't really show you the fight per se, but I'm going to put up a footage of the recording of the fight that I've recorded after we've seen the composition. So here it is. Here's my comp. And we're going to talk about the placement. So obviously our tank is going to go at the front, our protector is going to go all the way on the back, our two damage dealer are placed really anywhere, and our debuffer, I place it like that. Now, uh, as I said, I don't have any timing, so we're not going to use this icon over here. We bring in the uh, aura from Foley, which increased the crit damage of all champions in all battle. And we're going to bring one amazing tank, which is Quesitia. Uh, Quesitia, it's one of the most important builds. It seems to be quite a common across the entirety of these bosses, but maybe with exclusion of Alton. The tanks are those that makes the difference. If your tank is alive, as long as it's alive and healthy, your runs can go farther. And the farther you go, the more damage you do. So getting these champions with the right starts and making them really survivable is the way of going. I've built my Cassitia with the protection set. She has enough accuracy to do the job. She's placing a lot of debuff. They are very, very important in this fight. She has on the passive recharge speed penalty that is going to slow down the boss. And that is absolutely amazing over here. It's not as uh, consistent, but we don't care. That's why also we don't have a timing because every rotation is kind of slightly different depending on if she lands this one, she doesn't. Plus she has two meter reduction on her ultimate and that doesn't land all the time neither. So it's almost impossible to really speed tune the fight with her. And on her ultimate, she basically knock back the turn meter and place attack penalty too, which help us stay alive and is really, really important. I should work on my runes. I keep repeating it through the entirety of this video guides, but I'm gonna get there. I'm farming. <laughs> I'm farming as much as I can on the ancient battlefield and the reticle ruins, but I'm not getting much luck. I'm always getting the runes that I don't need. And the next champion we're gonna have a look is gonna be Dane, which is the other champion built with accuracy. 
I've built him with the Zero Set and the Crown of the Unclean. I need him basically to remove the attack uh, increase that the, pl the boss placed on himself on his ultimate. And he does a lot of area damage, but I need him also to place the increase attack. So he placed the decrease attack and other under debuff like the healing prohibitions from his battle skills. And every time you place debuff, he has a chance to place increase attack. So we're basically going to end up with increase attack most of the time. Um, so that is really, really important. It's going to increase the overall damage. And so is what we need. The other champions we're going to talk about is going to be Adolphus. Adolphus is absolutely fundamental for this comp. I don't think, unfortunately, that there is really a replacement. His shield is too much superior to anything else. And uh, he is also healing here. And that is really, really important for us. I've built him with some skill haste in the way that it basically is going to bring back his ability much faster. And placing those shields and healing through the shields is what is going to help Cassidia stay alive. She's the only one that really takes damage in this fight as long as she's alive. And so I need him to rotate back to this ability. He has over 400 enlightenment in this build. I have him with the uh, Antinaya Tiara. And I'm struggling as always with all the pronunciation. And this one basically gave him 15% more shield. Also on top of the enlightenment that he needs to build his um, basically shields up. He has some attack. Um... It doesn't really bring that much damage, but I'm happy that it does some damage as well. He hits with his ability, so he's bringing more damage as well. Uh, on the two sides, I brought the two damage dealer. As we said in the beginning, Erich is the champion we get from the storyline in Season 1. He is built with the Inventor set and the uh, Eye of the Giant. He's built for damage. He has decent crit rate, high crit damage, high attack. I rather have a lower crit rate and a higher crit damage than 100% crit rate and lower crit damage. This is because the duration of the fight is quite long, it's 5 minutes, and those hits, when they crit, they do much more damage for the entirety of the fight, considering that he has a 5 hit ultimate. I rather gamble on the crit rate proc and do much more damage over here to have a consistent output, but much lower. And that's why it's built this way. He has attack, chest, he has a crit damage with some crit rate and attack, glove, and he has crit rate and crit damage and attack, whatever I can. He has a crit damage, positive runes, and he has an attack, negative runes. Similar builds, obviously different stats because I don't have the same gear to place on everybody, but similar gear is going to be for Foley. Foley has the uh, Manticore statue, because on her ultimate, she does yes damage, but uh, basically I'm trying to uh, cast more orbs with her um, battle skills. And that's why I've placed this one. I've tried different um, um, artifacts, but this one seems to be the one that gives me the most damage. She's also built in the inventor set. I'm trying to push crit rate, attack, crit damage. I have an attack chest with some crit rate, and she's also in a crit damage with some crit rate gloves. She has a crit damage, positive runes, and an attack, negative runes with some crit rate. She has uh, almost, uh, what is that, 70% crit rate and 173 crit damage, decent attack, and she brings a lot of damage that you're going to see. So this is basically the fight that we're going to see. I'm going to put it up on the screen so you can see it as well. Basically, what is going to happen is that uh, Cassitia is going to run forward to the boss and the boss is going to be basically engaged with her only. And the rest of the team is going to be there to remove the debuff, to remove the buff that the boss puts on himself, put out a lot of damage and keep Cassitia alive. We're going to go basically all the way through the five minutes. The fight It's long and repetitive, so I'm not going to hold you here to watch it all. We can jump straight at the end, and you can see that we did a decent amount of damage. Now, 
Let me jump out so you can see all the bosses and all the damages I've done. And we're going to do some consideration on alternative for the positioning that we're going to need for this fight. So if we jump into the chief challenge and we go to records here, we're going to see, well, everybody's going to see their own damage. And these are my highest damage basically for each boss. At least the damage I recorded. I did a fight that it was higher score on altitude, but I was trying to chase higher scorers again and I didn't... I haven't been able to repeat it. It was 30 million point something. 28 million is still good. I'm fine with that. It's done with only Epic. And if you haven't seen the guide, you should definitely go watch it. It's a very good comp. I'm working on this comp though to try to get one between Clovis and Garius out because I want to use them on the um, Radiant boss. There's not many options over there, so I'm going to have to do something on this comp. They're trying to bring a good champion out, especially because they have the 24% defense aura, and they're why I need one of them to be replaced. On Tower, which is the bottom one, is a guy that I published just yesterday. We did 23.8 million. We're using Furbat. Again, he is the tank that needs to be built to survive. He needs a lot of resistance on that fight. And the rest of the team is there to keep him alive, place decrease attack, and do damage with the two dauntless range damage dealer. <clears throat> and this one is my comp for Izzyla. And uh, it's a shame that I can't show you really each of the damage. But actually I can, now that I think about it, because I have the recording. Um, so I'm going to put it up on the screen, and you can see the breakdown. And you're going to see how basically Erich is going to do most of the damage, but Foley is going to do close enough damage on this fight. Now, as a replacement, we don't have many. We have to be very considerate with that. The best replacement for Quasita as a tank is, in fact, Horus. Horus has... Let me jump actually on the um, gallery. So we're going to see the, their kit and we're going to do all the consideration. Horus is the champion we get for free on day three of the game. And he has a lot of damage mitigation, damage reduction on his ultimate. He brings also an attack, attack penalty on his battle skills, although it is only 75% and he doesn't buck up to 100, which is really a shame in my opinion. So he might be as survivable as Quasita, but it's not really as good to place the decrease attack. You might have to do the run a few times to see if to place those debuff consistently. But he is really a good option. He's actually better than Isolde. Even if Isolde on paper has a better kit because she has a defense aura usable in all battle. She has the attack penalty on her ultimate. She plays shields and she basically does damage reduction when, she, when the champions are under shield. She plays defense up on herself. But nevertheless... Her basic stats probably are lower, and she falls a bit behind on Erich. Uh, there are other guides that show you how to use this comp with uh, Erich. So, uh, sorry, with Horus. So you can Google it on YouTube, and you're going to find him. And uh, for the block debuff instead, or block buff, buff removal, we should jump here on debuff and look for buff blocks. There are really two options. Liko and Fira are probably the most interesting. Liko has the block debuff on her ultimate, so you can try to use kill haste on this one, bring it down to 18 seconds. If you're using Horus, you can block the increased attack on the boss and be on rotation. She also has an aura that unfortunately is not usable in this fight. She's going to bring some healing and defense up uh, on one uh, champion so she can help your champion stay alive your tank up on front to stay alive she's going to grant increased attack on herself or resistance up if she has another buff she's going to have increased attack so she's probably going to bring resistance up on herself it's really not needed over here so you have to build her with the right accuracy the other one is Fira. Fira has the uh, accuracy penalty which is not really needed and a buff prohibition on a battle skill. This is much more difficult to really time correctly. He has a resistance aura. So if I had to choose one of the two, if I didn't have Dane to remove that buff, I will probably go with Lyco uh, or Lyco, depending on the pronunciation. 
she is from season one. She's from the uh, pillar in season one or the Femi under. I don't remember. Maybe the Femi under. And uh, she is decent for this fight. So you should actually consider using her. Now, they're, as I said before, they're not really replacements for uh, the shield champion. Um, Adolphus is too much better. There is a shield champion in the Necrosis Affinity, which in this season pairs with uh, Fire. It's Gladros. Uh, he does a decent shield, but uh, it doesn't bring really healing, and you're going to need that healing on the uh, tank on the front. So I wouldn't really suggest going with him, unfortunately. But to get back to the Fire Champions, let's have a look at the wild options we have. If you have any of the legendary uh, the old rare, the old range uh, champions. So you should definitely pair any of them with Erich. If you have Flora, she's built slightly different. She needs enlightenment and attack to do the damage. The others are more straight up damage dealer, and you should definitely use them because they do a lot, a lot of damage, even compared to epics. Um, in terms of epics, Karaman and Tonanon are a complete um, rule out here. Uh, unfortunately, Tonanon, which is one of the best damage dealer in the Epic Affinity period, probably seconds only to Gertin. Um, it's not usable here because melee champions, as I said, you're not really good against these bosses. And when it comes to range, Alfie can do some damage. It's more an enabler. It's going to basically improve the damage that Erich does. Um, but... I don't think he's going to out-damage in that combination, Erich and Alfie. He's going to out-damage Foley and Erich. If you don't have Foley, there is a rare that can be used, and that rare is none other than Nedda. Nedda has um, a good damage output, uh, a little bit less probably compared to Foley, at least in my experience. She has a good kit, though. She basically increased the hero watt success rate to 60%, so you're going to have basically much more often that proking she's gonna basically fire off fireball dealing fire damage to enemy on her battle skills and on her ultimate again she unleashes a fireball dealing 800 attack fire damage dealer to the boss she can do damage she's a rare but she definitely can do damage and also keep in mind that even if her stats for survivability are lower compared to epic she has a decent attack the skills quite well um and that is pretty much what you need because she has a higher attack actually compared to Foley. Um, but she's not going to take damage. And when she starts going to take damage because um, Kisita is going to die, then you're going to be dead in like a few seconds because that boss hits really hard. And if he's not a tank built for survivability, there is no way that anybody else is going to survive. So guys... This is pretty much everything you need to know for this fight. As I said, timing is really not relevant. You have so many factors. If you're using my comp, for example, with Vesitia, the pushback of the turn meter, the timing, the recharge reduction that is not lending all the time. You have Adolphus pushing the turn meter of your champions time to time quite randomly. And so your comp is going to be a little bit off all the time. You, you really need to be very lucky with debuff landing all the time with Quisitia to be able to properly speed tune. And that's why I've left the champion running as they are. I'm also hoping in that way to get a little bit more healing from Adolphus. You're trying to get him always in time with the uh, boss. Means also that the shields are going to fall off and it's not going to heal her back. So I prefer her to be healed. As you said, have you seen... I've got to 25 million, which is nothing crazy. It's not my account is not one of those whales accounts that does hundreds of hundreds of millions everywhere. But 25 million is more than respectable damage, in my opinion. And I hope I've clarified to you all the points regarding this boss. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate. Just leave a message down below. I'm going to try to work on another boss this week and get another guide out so you can start working if you are maybe a bit later than me, you are like one or two weeks away. You can start working ahead of time on your comps and see what champions are going to be needed. I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. And if you did, please consider like and subscribing. I'm trying to push the channel to 1,000 subs. 
any like, any share, any subscription help. I'm going to work now on another boss and I see you soon with another video about Dragonair signing off.